In my quest to conquer miter saw dust collection, I've come across some seriously gimmicky dust collection devices out there. Some of them I had no idea what they do, and some were actually really surprising. So I put together a list of seven dust collection doodads to see if they were gimmicks or goodbyes. And I guarantee that there's some things that we'll talk about that will either surprise you or change your mind about something. Let's get into it. And product number one is a cyclone separator. And I know you know what this thing is. You probably have one of these in your shop. The whole concept is to separate the dust from the air so that you don't get as much dust in your suction source like a shop vac, dust extractor, or dust collector. And the whole premise on how they work is they basically spin the air around, allowing the particles to drop out before the clean air goes to your suction source. Revolutionary, I know, but stick with me. This is the dust right separator for Brockler, and I really like these because they're low profile and my tendency to shove them into shop furniture. So for example, I've got one in my miter station, one in this workbench, and another in my Craig ACS workbench. They work really well when paired with a little shop vac. They do a great job of keeping the shop vacs mostly clean, but an even more low profile option would be something like this guy from Delmar Tools. This is basically this shrunken down to fit on top of a five gallon bucket, which means you can shove it in even smaller places. But here's the kicker. What you're trading in form factor is efficiency. So though these are really good options for compact spaces, it's not actually the best solution. You see, the issue with both of these options is that the physical space allowed to separate the particles isn't very big. So as soon as it starts filling up, the efficiency starts dropping quite a bit. So instead, the better option is actually something like this. Did you know DeWalt made one of those? This little guy is a six gallon proper cyclone separator. Basically anything with this type of shape is gonna be far superior at separating dust versus one of the flat ones we looked at earlier. So the flat ones have their place. I mean, I own many of them, but if you got the room, this is definitely the way to go. You can see right here on the label, they actually claim to capture up to 99.5% of the dust, which I can tell you from experience is a heck of a lot more dust captured than one of the other ones. And by the way, if you take the casters off, this thing is only like four inches taller, maybe, than one of the other ones. So still has a really small form factor, but I just like the fact that this is all one unit. You don't have to add a five gallon bucket and do any of that. So if you need a cyclone separator, that's a good one. And number two is this. The aptly named Makita Dust Box. I'm not making that up. I'll be honest, I got the idea for this video after I saw this advertised on, I think it was Amazon, and it said it's for the Makita miter saw, which I oh, just so happen to have right here. Now, I'll admit, in my excitement to buy this thing, I kind of missed that this doesn't actually fit this miter saw. It's actually an older version of the sliding Makita miter saw, but my curiosity is still really piqued as to what in God's name this thing does. And it's funny, on the Makita website, this product is listed again as the Makita Dust Box, which is not very descriptive. There's an about section, so I clicked it to expand it and nothing, there's, there's nothing there. So the only information on the website is saying what couple model saws this fits on. There's no picture of it actually on a saw. I had to go through the depths of Google to actually find an image of this thing anywhere near a saw. And from what I can tell, it attaches sort of back here to the suction and just kind of sits back here, sort of like this, and you attach your suction point here. And if we look at the side here, it actually looks like a little miniature cyclone separator built in. So it looks like the suction comes through here. There's a series of baffles that keep the dust from flowing directly into the cyclone. I guess the little vortex forms and your solid particles drop out down here. And what's really interesting is you pop this little thing back here and this drops out to obviously empty the sawdust, but it's actually got two compartments that are sealed from each other. So you're gonna get solids on this side and solids on this side, and I guess a clear airstream coming out of this side. So the concept is actually pretty cool. And though it doesn't fit this miter saw, I kinda wanna test it. Okay, this is what I've come up with. I've got the dust box sitting right here. I've got this hose going to the suction, which is inside the workbench. I've jankily put this hose backwards because that's the only way the adapter fit. And this is to simulate all the dust that the miter saw creates. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Interesting to say the least, worked actually better than I would have thought. You can see there's clearly sawdust in the areas where I'm guessing it's supposed to collect. But I think the idea of having this hanging off the back of your miter saw is just a little bit too clunky for most applications. But now I know what a Makita dust box is and 
that you probably shouldn't buy one because they're like 80 something dollars. I think this one's a solid gimmick, but now we know. And number three is the automatic vacuum switch. Okay, what well, could be gimmicky about that? Just hold your horses. As you all probably already know, this clever little contraption lets you plug in your tool here and your vacuum here so that when you turn your power tool on, there's a delay and then it automatically switches on your vacuum. And the bonus is that when you turn the tool off, the vacuum continues to run for about five seconds to clear out any remaining sawdust. Goodbye, right? Well, here's the thing. Take the miter saw, for example, a very popular place to install one of these things. Let me ask you this. When you're using your miter saw, do you make all of your cuts at one time keeping the power tool on or do you make periodic cuts? Yeah. Me too. So what ends up happening is the auto switch just cycles your vacuum on and off during this entire time. At a minimum, it's just really annoying, but really you're probably doing harm on your vacuum by starting and stopping it so many times. Instead, what I found to be actually a lot more convenient is just a remote switch. Every single dust collection device in my shop actually runs on something like this, and I really like this one not only because it's cheap, but also it's got this little tiny remote key fob that you can keep on you or just keep near whatever tool you're gonna use them for. So if you know you're gonna be using your miter saw, you just turn it on, and you leave it on in between cuts. I know it's less sophisticated than an automatic switch, but trust me, this is the way to go. There's a couple great options that I use around my shop. I'll have those linked all down below, but if you do want something that does both, can be automatic or just an on-off switch, check out the iVac Pro Switch. It's actually what I've got in my miter station, but I end up just using it on the remote setting all the time and simply turn it on when I'm making a bunch of cuts and then turn it off when I'm done. So it's not that I think the automatic switch is a gimmick per se, it's still a good buy, but I think the better buy is the remote switch. And number four is the drill dust attachment. The only thing I hate more than hanging a picture in the house is looking at the mess that's left afterwards. That's where this little guy comes in. Basically, you've got this rubber seal, this hooks up to a vacuum hose, you suck it to the wall, drill your hole, the dust hopefully falls down here, gets sucked up by the vacuum, no mess, kinda nice. I don't know why it's taking me so long to get one of these, it's not like they're expensive, they're like 12 bucks, they work great, I was able to test it on a couple of holes, and sure enough, left no mess. So definitely not a gimmick, actually a good buy, especially if you're planning on drilling a lot of holes where it makes it worth it to bring out. But what if you just wanna drill like one hole and you don't wanna like bring out the vacuum and the hose? Well, you can get one of these guys. This is like a silicone boot, it's actually got a bearing on one end, you drill through this hole, as you get closer to the wall, this compresses and supposedly catches all the dust. I went ahead and tried this and it actually did work pretty well. It didn't catch 100% of the dust, I'll be honest. But again, it's like 10 bucks. I don't know, I feel like this is probably worth having around the shop in case you just need to drill that one hole in the house. But I'm not sure if this is a gimmick or a good buy. This is right on the line for me. Why don't you decide? Leave your vote down below. But do you know what's a really good buy? Factor. Factor helps you meet your nutritional goals by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. And I know what you're thinking, Factor, I just met her. No, really, the fall's busy for everyone. I get it, but if you wanna make sure you're still eating well, try Factor. Skip the extra trips to the grocery store, the chopping, the prepping, the dishes, and just have healthy, prepared meals. And then you can get back to your pumpkin spice lattes. Here's how it works. Each week you choose how many boxes you want, and then you can select the type of meals. So they've got all kinds of stuff like keto, vegetarian, vegan. I personally prefer chef's choice so that I can choose whatever meals I want. Then choose from over 30 chef prepared options, including some tasty fall flavors like cranberry pecan chicken and apple Dijon pork chops. Ooh, that sounds good. Then your meals show up ready for the fridge. And when you're ready to eat, just pop them in the microwave for two minutes and you're done. And trust me when I say this is not a run of the mill microwaved meal. I mean, I know I'm basically a corporate shill, but they're so freaking good. If you want to try them out, which I definitely recommend, head to factor75.com and enter code SHOPNATION50 to get 50% off your first factor box. That's factor75.com and use code SHOPNATION50 to get 50% off your first factor box. Okay, back to dust collection. And number five is the mullet third hand boom arm. And what we've got is basically exactly what it sounds like, an articulating hollow arm that is meant to help you with dust collection. So you can see that all the joints are adjustable. You just kind of unscrew this, move it to whatever position you want, and you can put this in really whatever orientation you need for whatever you're doing. And you can truly use it as kind of a third hand. You can see it's got this funnel attachment. You just set this up next to your workpiece. So as you're working, it's collecting and pulling off the dust. And based on the size of this thing, it's got a pretty good reach. So my workbench is four feet by six feet and this on one corner could reach pretty much anywhere on it. But it's also tall enough to get to something like a drill press or a bandsaw, someplace that generates a lot of dust that you want a third hand to help you with. Also for what it's worth, any company that throws a koozie in as their swag, it's okay in my book. 
That third hand feature is cool, but the feature that I was looking forward to the most is actually using it as an extension and strain relief when using a hand tool like a sander. Now for all you Festool fanboys out there, you know that they offer a fancy smancy boom arm for their sander, which of course retails for $500. But it's just a piece of rigid bent pipe that your hose can attach to, and you can't really position it. This blue collared mullet can do all that and more, for less than half the price. Plus it's got a bunch of mounting options. I bought the little mobile base, which is nice because you can wheel it around your shop. There's also a bench top mount and you can also mount this directly on top of the mullet cyclone separator. In fact, you can get the mullet boom arm and cyclone separator for less than the white bent pipe with a Festool logo on it. Hmm, this seems like a much better buy. I think the mullet boom arm is a solid buy in my opinion, especially if you're doing a lot of sanding or small tool work where you need a third hand for dust collection. And number six, you've actually already seen me use in this video, and that is a quality dust collection hose that you can fit to pretty much anything. One of the biggest pain points of dust collection isn't the dust collection itself. It's actually just connecting everything together. Unless you somehow operate in one tool ecosystem, every tool seems to have a slightly different connector. So having a hose that fits pretty much everything becomes very important. What I love about the Sentec hose is they come with all these different connectors that seem to be really well thought out in how they interface with different tools. You can see just how easy it is to change out these adapters. It's got these kind of like quick lock feature. So I need to go to this size, bada bing, bada boom. Plus they're all over molded with kind of a flexible rubber so they fit really nice. And the absolute best part is, is that the hose is not expensive. I think the entire set with all the adapters is like 50 bucks. But when you consider that this saves so much heartache, it's pretty worth it. Another thing I like is that this is a 10 foot hose, which seems to be the magic number. 10 feet not only lets me get pretty much anywhere in my shop, but it's also short enough such that the suction losses aren't too high. So basically for all of those reasons, the Sentec hose, definitely a good buy. And finally, number seven, a good quality sander and dust extractor. Now I'll be the first to admit, I was very late to this party. I've been struggling along with my corded Makita random orbital sander and my cordless rigid because I figured it's a sander, it sands. And at the risk of sounding hyperbolic, the first time I used a good quality sander and dust extractor, it was like I was living in a black and white world and that was the first time I saw color. Now it was a little hyperbolic. It really was like night and day for me though because the sanding process itself was so much more comfortable and fast, especially when you pair it with some killer sandpaper like this Cubitron. But for me, one of the bigger things that I noticed was the complete lack of dust after I was done sanding. Previously, if I was gonna sand something, I just knew my entire shop and garage for that matter is gonna be covered in dust, even if I had a shop back hooked up to it. The dust collection efficiency of this kind of setup is just so much better. And I think it's one of those things where you just don't know until you try it. Now I will say that these systems are quite a bit more money than those little cheap random orbital sanders that I was using. And there's lots of good systems out there. I'm a big fan of the 3M extract system. I highly recommend you go check it out, but any of them are great and you will see such a massive, massive difference. So this for sure is a good buy. If you wanna to win tools like that and much more, I'm giving away $3,500 worth of cash and prizes at the end of this year 2023. There's a couple of different ways to enter, including ways to get multiple entries. I'll leave all those details down in the description as well as links to everything I talked about. Thanks for watching and keep those shops dust free. Is it weird when I walk off like that? Oh, bully.